Bandwidth for MacBreak is brought to you by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Welcome back to MacBreak Studio. My name is Steve Martin from Ripple Training. And today, I have a special guest with me, flown all the way in from the Eastern Seaboard, Abba Shapiro. Now, <laughs> Abba is a Apple certified trainer like myself, and uh, we like to refer to each other as being separated from birth. He actually does what I do on the East Coast, which, that is he trains uh, Final Cut Pro trainers. And uh, I wanted to bring him here because he has so many tips and tricks under his belt, and I'm, I just, I wanted to, to have him share some of those with you. Um, also, Abba is a producer director, and he's been doing it for how long have you been producing? Directing? Cecil B. DeMille and I we worked together on some of the, his earlier films, but uh, I just you know, <laughs> good cosmetic surgery, which is yeah something we'll do in motion. Was that the first Ten Commandments or the second? He did two. Well, the sequel, yeah, the sequel didn't catch on. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, Abba's here to show some great, some great tricks. And um, so what do you have for us? You're going to show us some stuff from... I'm going to uh, talk about real-time, real-time playback. Uh, a lot of times, you know, as people have been using Final Cut, we know we, each version, we get faster machines, we get newer code, things play back in real-time, but sometimes real-time does break. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can see things in real-time when otherwise you would need to render them, saving you render time and render space. And sometimes giving you a little bit of flexibility to be able to play. Okay, great. So we're Let's... gonna do this. Um, I want to say one thing. The footage we're using is uh, from the folks at Bungie. They have a product called Halo. And I want to do something different. I just finished a documentary about dolphins carrying puppies across the Atlantic Ocean. And I thought that was a little too warm and fuzzy. So I thought we'd switch back to uh, <laughs> Halo. Halo. Okay. Okay. Oh, let's see Halo. So I, I want to thank the folks at Bungie. And they use Final Cut in their workflow to do all their trailers and Vidocs. So it's pretty cool. So the first thing I want to talk about is one button over here to the upper left-hand corner of your timeline. And it says right here, RT. And one thing you should have turned on always is unlimited RT, not just safe RT. And that's going to give you a lot more flexibility with playback. As a matter of fact, what the engineers at Apple did is they said, you know, sometimes you don't need to see at full resolution 30 frames a second. You just want to get a feel for what the cut looks like. Right. So you can switch to unlimited, and it may notch it down. It may be 29 frames a second, 28 frames a second. But while you're editing, you can be creative as opposed to worrying about rendering and, and mechanical. Right, because in, whenever you have to render something, that's your cue to go get a sandwich or go to the bank. And uh, with, this, with this engine, you can just work in real time without... Uh... Absolutely. And you don't have to worry about switching it back when you're going to export. It'll always export full resolution, 30 frames a second. Oh, great. Well, it'll show us how to work more uh, but, render, but sometimes renderless. sometimes things do break. Yes. And now this is something pretty cool. This is something called the Quick View. You actually would get it under Tools. The keyboard command is Option 8. Okay. Now, if you notice, when I open up the Quick View window, it looks pretty much exactly... Like the browser. No. <laughs> like the, ah, okay. It looks like the browser, but then you bring this up in front, and it looks just like your viewer in your canvas. I see. But one thing you'll notice here, there's a range control, and you can actually view a range of 2 to 10 seconds around where your playhead is parked. Right. So if I go ahead and I hit play at this point, you see my playhead is parked on this clip, and it's just cycling through I see. these 2 seconds. It's okay. like the... Uh, it's like the uh, play range in motion. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, this allows you to make Final Cut a little more motion-like without having to jump into motion. You can actually work with filters and transitions, see what they're like in real time, and play with them and get immediate feedback. Wow. Um, how long has this tool been here? I mean, This I mean... tool has been here since Final Cut Pro 3. Ah, okay. so, You've been uh, here since Final Cut Pro 1, as I have, but this came in in Final Cut Pro 3. So what is old is now new again. That was my joke. You stole it. <laughs> I did. Never, never, never trust Steve. He will steal your jokes. <laughs> Okay, so let's actually see how this works. Yeah. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a filter on it to show you how you can work okay. with a filter and see it mm -hmm. play back in real time. And a lot of, so I'll select it. I'll go up to the effects window. Let's pick something that probably won't break real time. This is a pretty fast machine. So we'll go filter. And let's grab actually. Um. Do you know how to put on a filter in Final Cut? Uh, yes, one would actually have to select the filter and have the timeline active. Oh, I see. Yes. Maybe you should take a Final Cut Pro class. I think I would just buy one of your DVDs from Ripple Training. Oh, great. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> so we'll go back here up to our effects video filters, and we're going to use one of the stylized ones. And let's go here and turn this into line art. Line filter. art. Okay. Ooh. So if you notice, normally you would play with this, but I can see this playing back. 
Wow. And if I go ahead and I load the clip back from the timeline into the viewer and go to the filter tab, I can start actually playing with the properties. With the properties and see in the left side of the screen exactly how they're reflected. Also, what's happening is that it's uh, the quick view window is caching those frames in real time, or it's caching the frames around and then playing it back as you make your changes. Absolutely. So I can see if the scene changes over time, if my filter just goes wacko or not. Wow. So this is great. And a lot of times what and, I'll do is no I'll focus either. here. No rendering. I'm not wasting any, any um, hard drive space. If I don't like it, I just try something else. I can delete and hit something else. Um, is the quick view window dependent on the graphics card in any way? Uh, yes, it's actually more dependent upon the speed of the machine, actually. I apologize. I the CPU. So what you're saying is this quick view window would be great for people with slower machines and still get this really great real-time playback. As a matter of fact, if I'm working on a slower laptop, one of those archaic, you know, maybe dual cores, Yeah. now yeah. obsolete, right? Um, what I could do is if I'm not getting real-time playback in my timeline, I would switch over to the quick view and it may not catch up the first time around if it's really complex, if I put a lot of filters. It may play back a little bit slower, but then it will cache and come back to normal I speed. I see. The other thing I can do if I'm really pushing an older machine is I can choose the resolution if I want to play back full, ah. half, or quarter resolution. So it probably caches much quicker than that way. Absolutely, because yeah. it's doing f much fewer pixels. I see. So this is really useful. A lot of times I'll even leave this open as I'm creating an effect. I'm trying different filters, trying to get a look, and I'm focusing on my canvas, and I'm not even pay atten paying attention to the quick view. And then I'll look over and I'll see what the final shot looks like. Can you set an in and out point in the tool bench? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, if I want to work in a specific area, if I go into my timeline and mark an in and an out point, You'll see here now the range is from in to out. I see. And this is great because the next step we're going to do is we're going to actually talk about uh, a transition and how to play with transitions using the quick view. Uh, a little secret, and I'm not even sure if you know this, is with quick view you can set in and out. Right. You can also set a range, but a lot of people don't realize that I could set an end point and a duration, and I'll play from that end point X number of seconds. Oh, so I'm yeah. going to go ahead and remove the out point. The command for that would be option. Option O. O. And if you notice here, it's a range of two seconds, but it's starting From the end point. at the end point. See, I didn't know that. Yeah. See, and I'm I could still, do the same I'm thing. I'm still willing to learn. And I'm still willing to learn. Yes. Sometimes Steve <laughs> and I get together and we just share tips. It's yes. kind of boring for other folks, but we like it. Yes. You can do the same thing with an out point. Okay. Well, that's awesome. Okay. Let's take a quick look at, with a quick view, mm -hmm. at playing with transitions. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to select my edit point. And as a matter of fact, let me go ahead and I will mark an in and an out point around that edit mm -hmm. point. So there I see my cut. Yep. I'm going to go up under effects. You have a favorite uh, transition that you like, Steve? Uh, the world doesn't have enough page peel. Page, page peel. This isn't is, it? yeah, you can, you can never go wrong. You can never go wrong. Yeah, your wrong. clients love it. Yeah. Let's go ahead. We'll load the page peel into our viewer. I see that. Okay. We don't even have to worry here about what's happening in the canvas. I see the page peel. As I modify it, it's automatically updating. And it's updating in real time. Yeah. So I can stretch it out to make it longer. I can go ahead and put a highlight on it. Now, I'm going to do something that always breaks the page peel. What always breaks the page peel? Whenever you drop something into the well, the texture map it onto the background. So let's go ahead. We'll go into Can our... You put, I like that because you could put subliminal messaging behind the page peel. So well, it's peeling away. You we say, could put ripple Bye. training, Shapiro video, one of the two. Yeah. Or I could just maybe drop a picture from Halo into the back. Oh, ooh. And if you notice, it does slow down a little bit, but then it caches and it catches up. Very nice. And if I looked at my timeline, let me go ahead and move this out of the way. Well, I didn't see you break it. Did you break it? I didn't break real time, but I went into unlimited RT, which is this orange line, which means right. it's going to play back kind of slow. Oh, I see. But one thing I can still do here is I can go back and I can still modify my transition and I can see how it's going to look I see. in real time. Excellent. So the quick view is really a lot of, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, but it's really useful also. Yes, it looks like it. So it looks like it actually kind of turns Final Cut Pro into a motion-like uh, editor. It gives you a lot more real time, and it's in Final Cut 3, 4, 5, and 6. All right. So anyway, we want to thank you for joining us on Mac Big Studio. Uh, again, Steve Martin from Ripple Training and Abba Shapiro. Thanks for watching.